Average age of the young Americans serving in uniform today is 20 and a half years of age, making him about 10 months older than his grandfather who would have served in my war. He's a high school graduate. He's a volunteer. He is brighter, better educated, better trained, led, and equipped than any soldier, sailor, airman, guardsman, or marine of any country in history. He goes to work wearing an eight-pound Kevlar helmet, a 45-pound flak jacket. He's been taught chemistry and physics and ballistics and avionics and electronics to operate and maintain the most sophisticated weapons and equipment ever designed by the hand and mind of man. He can use his body like a weapon and his weapon like part of his body. And he can take a life or save one because he has been so remarkably well-trained. The images of the young Marines and soldiers and sailors and airmen going to Bible studies and religious services aren't staged. They're all real. They're all spontaneous, and nearly all of them are initiated by those young Americans in harm's way. When they gather in prayer circles and huddle up before a mission, they're not going out to play football. They are going into mortal combat, and they know that some of them are liable not to come back and they do it because they have faith. Just for the grins, how many of you raised a teenage boy? I used to do this when Betsy wasn't there because she eventually told me, I saw you raise your hand, I, I did that. <laughs> Think about getting a teenage boy to clean up his own room, do his own laundry, fix his own meals, clean up everything without a size 10 in the backside, and yet that same youngster today washes and mends his own clothing feeds himself, takes care of cleaning his weapon, cleaning himself, he's totally self-sufficient. The kid who once wouldn't share a candy bar with his little brother now gives away his last drop of water to a wounded comrade, his only MRE to a hungry Afghan kid, and splits his ammo with a mate in a firefight. I always save this one for last when I'm explaining it to young people about who they are, because so few of them know the truth of these youngsters. This is a frame taken from my footage on the 6th of April, 2003. Baghdad is the smoke pall you see in the background. The Marine unit I'm with embedded is the van, the lead element of the attack on the Eastern Corridor. We're about 15 miles outside of Baghdad and a Republican Guards regiment ambushes this Marine rifle company. They spin their Humvees around and there is a gunfight that occurs between this regiment and this rifle company. And in the midst of the beaten zone, the area where the intersecting bullets are crossing, a United States Navy corpsman I had first met in Kandahar in 2001 rushes into the battlefield, right through the fire, drags two, two wounded Marines out, and carries them on his shoulder to a helicopter that's landed in the roadway. And in this footage right here, I am standing on the ramp of that helicopter. And this corpsman, who's rushed now twice before and brought these two wounded back, now has the third one, and off to the right-hand side, as you look at the screen, a Reuters news crew sets up their tripod, and they're videotaping him going in and out. And as this guy staggers back into the gunfight, one of them shouts out, hey, mate, what did you do that for? Didn't you notice? In other words, you stupid American. Didn't you notice that wasn't a Marine? If you look carefully at that photograph, you'll see that the wounded warrior who's already been bandaged up by that United States Navy medical corpsman isn't a Marine. It's a wounded Iraqi soldier. And this U.S. Navy corpsman has rushed into the battlefield to save his life. And so, because it's polite company, Wayne, I can only put it this way. In response to the Reuters news crew, the Navy corpsman gives them a gesture. <laughs> you're, you're, not supposed to, you're not supposed to get that part. He gives him a gesture, he says, didn't you notice? He was wounded, that's what we do, we're Americans.